A World on Fire, authored by Jeffrey Tucker, Brownstone Institute, Zero Hedge by Tyler Durden. Strange, isn't it, how human beings have a hard time adjusting to disaster in their decision-making and even in their mindset? Reporters have to do their jobs as they're trained, traders too, everyone does. They please their bosses, they don't sound alarms, they don't scream and yell as they probably should. But there's a moment in the day when the work is done and perhaps a cocktail comes out or the dishes are washed and the kids are in bed and the room falls silent. At this moment, millions and billions of people the world over know it. Disaster is all around us. We're just pretending otherwise simply because this is what we have to do. It was this way during lockdowns. They must know what they're doing. Otherwise, why would be forced to, to do this? If we're all to do our part, maybe this will end sooner rather than later. The experts surely know better than we do what is what. What can we do but trust? Let's just uh, let us adjust and find a way to normalize all of this in our minds. We are powerless to change it in any case. And thus the peoples of the world adjusted and will continue to do so as the fundamentals decay and rot long past the end of lockdowns and most vaccine mandates, even as the old rituals and signals of life as we once knew it fade further into memory. Enough with the dreamy existentialism. Let's talk about life in a one-bedroom apartment in London. The price of energy for heat has nearly doubled, seemingly overnight. Truly, it took months, but it has felt like one day to the next. The energy bills will be approaching a substantial portion of the rent itself. And the forecasts, which one has to do because that's how energy markets work on the consumer end, is showing a doubling and doubling again. And here's what Goldman Sachs is seeing. Small businesses cannot function under conditions. Tom Carriage, the celebrity chef, revealed that the annual energy bill at his pub has soared from £60,000 £60, to £420,000 and warned that ludicrous price rises left the hospitality sector facing a terrifying landscape, according to reports from The Telegraph. This is running wildly ahead of consumer prices generally. This is only through June. We are already approaching 100% inflation in energy. Many will need to, need to close up shop. The new Prime Minister, Liz Trust, who calls herself a conservative, has capped the price increases for consumers while pushing the largest spending bill to bail out energy companies ever. It truly seems like she has no choice. Yes, that's what they all say, but in this case it might be true simply because otherwise the entire nation would totally fall apart. And it could happen anyway. Quote, the UK may be facing a wave of business bankruptcies exceeding anything witnessed during the post-2008 panic and recession, reports Joseph Sternberg. Some 100,000 firms could be forced into insolvency in coming months. Bankruptcy consultancy red flag alert warned this week. These are otherwise healthy firms with at least £1 million in annual revenue. Business failures on this scale would dwarf the roughly 65,000 firms of any size that went under from 2008 to 2010, end quote. Everyone wants to know why. As always, there are numbers of factors. The sanctions on Russia for its struggle over the borders of Ukraine are, were ill-advised. That has never stopped the deployment of such tactics. Sanctions against Cuba, still in force, began 60 years ago all in an effort to make some foreign state behave in a way that the U.S. demands. They have driven up the price of energy all over Europe and the U.K., but even then, Russian sources only about 3% of U.K.'s energy needs. Another culprit is the fanatic attempt on the part of the government to convert the fossil fuel economy to one powered by wind and sun. For reasons of climate change, we know how good politicians are in controlling the global climate by taking away your consumer conveniences. But really, even these two factors would not be enough to cause this level of carnage. The real root of the problem is monetary, which in turn traces again to lockdown policies, the wild currency debasement starting March 2020 and continuing through lockdowns has wrecked the place. How could they not see this coming? It's ridiculous. And it happened the world over. Charts showing put together messy, but it tells the whole story of how one generation of central bankers wrecked the world. 
the key on the left tells the monetary inflation rates and the key on the right tells you price inflation rates one lags and the other the other by only 16 to 18 months i've color coded it so you can see the relationships and this covers the us green eu red the uk blue you can see the massive oceans of paper being pumped out to cover up for egregious evil of lockdowns do you remember those days when governments the world over imagined they could somehow shut things down while keeping the data looking pretty with the printing press? How quickly things fall apart. My friends in the UK are truly panicked. They want to come to the US just to get away, but many of my friends are rebels and did not accept the vaccine because they are healthy and under the age of 80. They rejected the jab. Now they can't, cannot come to the US because the US is still imposing rules that forbid travelers from foreign countries who are not vaccinated from getting across the borders. These policies again trace to the lockdown era, March 12, 2020 in particular, when the office of the president decided on its own to do the unthinkable and shut travel from Europe, UK, Australia, and New Zealand. It caused family disruption, business loss, and tragedy all around. It's still not normalized, which makes the point no one in Washington has any regrets. This is the essence of policy in America today. Truly, people are being locked out of our country for being insufficiently loyal to Pfizer, which seems to be the real government here at home, at least as it pertains to public health. The most striking feature of that which affects the UK today is the sheer speed of it all. One day, life was normal, and suddenly the bills were through the roof. No one could explain why. It was some kind of mystery and, extre and extremely disorienting. Why energy, for example? Well, inflation strikes in strange ways. It gravitates to the thing most vulnerable to price hikes. This could be di dictated by fashion or policy or both, but when it happens, no power can stop it. The story of going from normal to double and triple prices, forecasting to go much higher, reminds me of books I've read about Weimar, how things were fine, then suddenly, until suddenly they were not, and life itself took a shocking turn. Until recently, Americans have looked at the chaos abroad and thought, oh, that's what these weird foreign people do, just stuff, strange stuff with un unstable governments and uns unsound financial systems. And yet right now it's happening to our mirror country across the pond, a place that Americans think of as cousins with a royal family. The remarkable thing is that the UK monetary policy was not as bad as the US's own, the only difference is that there is a larger international market for dollars and for pounds. This allows the Fed a bit of breaking room to do more damage. But can it happen here? Yes, certainly, and it could happen before year's end. The policies of the last three years have created an incredible powder keg. No one knows when it will go off. No one knows what to do when it happens. There are so many other data points, missing workers, food shortages, political instability, and breathtaking entrenchment of Xi-backed lockdowns in China. The world is on fire. Most people are not willing to think about it or talk about it yet. And this is on Zero Hedge by um, Jeffrey Tucker via Brownstone Institute. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.